have this copy out um, for your LEQ tomorrow just to guide you. You don't have to do it, okay? But it, it'll help you like if you're if you're kind of stuck, okay? So when you get your LEQ prompt tomorrow, what is the first thing you should do? You need to read the entire question and ask yourself things that we've already talked about, like what skill is it causation, comparison, or continuity and change over time? Okay. Um, what are the topics? Is it talking about economics? Is it talking about um, the triangular trade? I don't know, Begin's Rebellion? I don't know. And then what are the dates? Okay. Because you might write an awesome essay that was outside of the time period, and then you can't earn your points. Okay. So it's really important to make sure you establish your boundaries um, by understanding the question. Okay. Um, all right, I'm logging in from my Chromebook, so hopefully I didn't miss any questions. So I can't see them here. Okay, so again, read the entire question, find out what skill, what topic, the dates. Make sure you understand the question. Okay, here's something that maybe you haven't been coached before. I could be wrong, but um, I'm one of those where if I don't write something down, I'm going to forget to do it. Okay, I'm all about checklists and stuff. With an LEQ, there are no hints, okay? And before you even get to writing your thesis and stuff, time yourself for two minutes, and you're basically creating a word bank, okay? So let's see right now, just with this, this chat, okay? Um, let's just say the prompt is about comparing and contrasting reasons for colon like the British colonies to be established, like the different regions. So like there's, you know, there's Southern colonies, there's New England colonies, there's middle colonies, and you're comparing and contrasting reasons for settling. Okay. So like just pretend just a quick little thing. What you would do right here is you would just do a quick, like let's create a word bank because you know, sometimes you forget about stuff. So you're creating the word bank so you have something to go back to. So right now, just using your chat, okay, just type something that you think, just something that would go in that prompt about comparing and contrasting, and it's just topics. So not a sentence, just like, here's something. Okay, trade, okay. Uh, let's see, Virginia Joint Stock Company, okay. So I'm thinking there's some southern stuff. I see. I think Tommy, you could talk about southern or middle there. What about New England stuff? I, I, there we go. Yeah, that's what I figured, Tommy. Environment. Okay, Clayton. So that means you're probably going to talk about how it, like the environment of the South made it more, you know, a reason to go do the plantation economy. Mercantilism. Okay. Good. Um, you could talk about the, you know, oh, there we go. Wealth plantation. OK, <laughs> um, but do you see and, you know, the, the more specifics you can, the better. And you're creating a little, you know, a word bank so you can go back and refer to it if you need to. OK, because there definitely that right that writer's fog is real in the LEQ. And I think it's way more real in the LEQ than the DBQ. OK, at least from my experience taking the AP exam, my, my DBQ is basically about like the French Indian War and how it led to stuff. And then one of my LQs, you had to do two back then. One of them was women's roles in Puritan New England. Yeah. Okay. So um, you're creating a little word bank. Okay. Now think about it. You spend one minute understanding the question, finding out the dates, the topics, whatever. Then you spend two minutes creating your word bank. That's three minutes out of your 50 minutes tomorrow. And like, it's going to make things go smoother for you. So I really encourage you to do that. Okay. All right. Next. Okay. What should you do next is you're going to look at your box that you just created, that word bank. Okay. And you're going to create what I call buckets. Now, remember, um, when you write like a formal essay and like research paper, you know, teachers make you do an outline and all that kind of stuff. We're not like, this is a timed essay. This is not perfection. Remember, it's about most points in a given amount of time. Um, 
So we don't have time to have this outline. I think what re works really well for a lot of students is to visually organize it, and I call it your buckets, but just note, your buckets are your talking points. Your buckets are what the, the like your categories of what you're gonna talk about. Your buckets become your paragraphs, okay? So you're gonna create preliminary buckets because things might change. You might say, scratch that, okay? Um, how many par main body paragraphs did you have in an LEQ? You should shoot for three, okay? At the bare minimum, though, two is the minimum. And that is talking about main body paragraphs, okay? So at the very minimum, you would have two buckets, okay? And I'm just going to base off of, for instance, um, I liked what Clayton uh, said about environment. He typed environment. I think one of my buckets would be about like environment and climate because that definitely played a big role in like the you know what's going to happen like to the economy and stuff in those regions okay so one of my buckets will be about environment slash climate okay and then maybe this one um maybe about like religion and really focus on like new england and stuff maybe the quakers and the mill colonies and then say just like it really didn't play a big role in the southern colonies but there was you know like the you know the um there was some degree, but very little. So you see, I'm addressing things. And so again, I'm just creating buckets, okay? And when I mean create buckets, means like you draw a little blob and then you like title the bucket, okay? Um, okay? So then what will you do, okay? You are going to, what I call like, chunk things into the buckets, you're going to fill the bucket, okay? So if we're talking about the environmental bucket, you know, you could talk about um, the swampy area that was very humid. You could talk about the rocky soil in New England. So I'd put like N-E soil, okay? And that, this is just creating quick talking points, okay? N-E soil, okay? And if I'm talking about like the religion, I could talk about uh, you know, I'd put Quakers, middle, middle, okay, that kind of stuff. And then you're creating something, and then you just kind of check it off when you actually are writing it. So this is all about, like, drafting, because I really do think people get stuck not writing, planning. So, again, let's recap. One minute, you read and understand the prompt. Then, starting after that minute, take two minutes, create your buckets. Then I would say maybe a minute, just create the bucket titles and then spend a couple minutes plugging in your bucket so now you have um, an organized um, like you have an understanding of what you're talking about and from your little visual you should be able to come up with your thesis now okay so remember a thesis has to address what all parts of the prompt and it has to make a defensible claim Okay, and again, let's just pretend that this prompt is about comparison. So basically, it's asking to, t I'm going to tell you about like the similarities and the differences. And in the end, I'll say, you know what? There are more differences than similarities. Okay, that is like a very, very basic, very, very basic um, thesis right there. Okay. You would need to address more like I might say with in terms of geography and climate but then like my last sentence would be like furthermore comma or thus comma I love using that so go for if you want to okay um, there were more significant differences than similarities um, with these three colonial regions okay and so what you do is your main idea you might have seen this before as a chicken foot okay so your main idea is right here. So I, I might put like um, more differences, just put that there for my planning, okay? And then like key point one, I know it's about environment, and then like religion. And you know what? Let me just, I have extra time, I'll throw in a third one, like maybe importance of like trade and mercantilism, like the economic aspect, okay? And so what I would do for a thesis is I would say like, there are more differences and similarities. And then I would do my, I call it my bucket sentence, where it's like some examples would be, you know, the environment, um, the emphasis on religion, and um, 
you know, the emphasis on trade. And then I'd have one more sentence that kind of says overall, um, you know, there were more differences. You see that kind of outline. So when you do a thesis, I should see your argument. I also need to see your talking points. Okay. But again, do I want to see all the details in your talking points? No, I just want to see your buckets and maybe throw in like one such as in your bucket. Okay. But do not define anything in your thesis. That's where your main body paragraphs. Okay. So again, that is, that is the fastest way I think to like practice. And all this really can be done in less than 10 minutes. Okay. Out of your 50 minutes. Okay. So now let's look at the rubric. And I've posted this to you too as well. I would make sure if you can print it out, go for it because I really think it will help you. A rubric to me is like a checklist. So like when you're writing, you check it and then you're like, yes, okay, I've done that. So then you can forget about it because once you've earned it, they can't really take it away from you. Okay. So we already know some aspects. Y'all know, I went ahead and scrolled down because y'all know you got to do a little bit of pre context. Okay. We got to do a thesis. That right there is worth two points. For me, that's 20 points out of 100, okay? That, that's the first thing you do, and that's the first thing you should write, okay? Now, the next thing, look at where it says evidence, okay? This is basically your content, because again, it's just your brain. What can you pull from, okay? If you provide specific examples, okay? If you give me, and we're talking in your entire essay, you just have to give me three pieces of content, if you think about it, guys, that's not much, okay? If you give me, if you just identify three pieces of content that fit this prompt, that is one point, okay? You're kind of faking it there, but it's one point, okay? The next step, okay, is that if you actually do something with the content, okay? If you actually like define the content and like explain how it supports your argument, you've now earned an additional point. So we've talked about four out of the seven points from the college board. So again, if you give me three pieces of evidence that work, like you just say, here's some examples and you don't, you don't even like define them you say, here are three examples, and like they fit the bill with the prompt, one point. If you actually like use the evidence to support your argument by like defining it, one more point. Got it? Okay, so now is the analysis part, okay? Basically, we talked about those historical skills, okay? When I read your LEQ and it's obvious you are addressing a skill, okay? So if it's causation and you, and you explain how this led to this or this resulted in this, you get that point, if it's comparison, you, you explain that there, this is a difference compared to other places or whatever, you get the point. That's why it's really important to understand what skill you're doing. And if it's obvious you're addressing the skill, you get a point for that. So now we've had five out of seven points. Okay. Now, number two. Okay. I'm going to tell you this right now. We aren't there yet. And some students might not even be there yet May of this year or next year, I guess, and that's okay. I call this next thing the unicorn point. Okay, what I would suggest is if you want to just like pass this LEQ, just say, you know what, I'm gonna say the max five points I can get to 90, and I'm just gonna say, forget about the unicorn point. I'm not gonna worry about it. But if you have time, you're like, hey, I know this, go for it. 
okay? But don't almost think of it as a bonus, okay? Because it is very hard to get, okay? Um, I graded this summer, and I'm pretty sure out of 450 DBQs, which same thing here, I awarded the unicorn point three times, okay? So, yeah, don't, don't fret about that. And basically, the unicorn point, think about it. Like, it's providing something extra, okay? What I would suggest is if it talks about, like, the changes in something, focus, do one paragraph of it, the effects of it. Or if there's something that talks about the differences of something, focus on the similarity. Does that make sense? You're, you're doing more than what the prompt is asking you to do. Okay? But again, if you're just like, you know what, we'll deal with that later, skip it. You usually do that like your last paragraph. Okay? Like main body paragraph. I would skip it though if you were not sure. Okay? The, the last two things, um, let's see. Yeah. The last two things make up um, is four points, and that's like what I do to make it ten points instead of six points because it makes it easier for me to, you know, grade it. Um, basically having good topic sentences. Oh, and I'm spelled sentence. And then, like, is the stuff, like, accurate? Now, of course, if you, like, make a little mistake, again, it's, it's a timed essay. I expect mistakes, whether it's grammar or a little bit of historical stuff. If it's a glaring mistake, like you said, that George Washington, you know, fought in the American Civil War and the South won the American Civil War, that's where points would be taken off there. Okay? Um, I really try to give you those 40 points as like a cushion. Okay? Um, but just note... The topic sentences is where, and I, I have a thing for that. Okay, so again, just to recap, one point, thesis. One point, I call it pre-context, okay? One point is evidence, and basically it's three examples, but it's one point. If you actually use the evidence to support, that's another point. So now we're looking at four points, okay? If it's obvious, you address the skill, that's one point. And then the last thing, it was what I call the unicorn, one point. The other four remaining points are like me stuff, which I'll get into in a second. Can y'all give me a thumbs up if you have an understanding? Okay, awesome. Okay, let's go back to this Google slide. All right, guys, so for time's sake, um, I'll post a video for you to watch that breaks it down even more. Um, it's like you only watch it for like five minutes, okay? Um, I'll do that, but for time's sake, let's just continue. So um, y'all did this, so correct me if I'm wrong, but for your pre-context activity y'all did, the prompt was something about evaluate the change in ideas on like American independence from 1763 to 1776, right? Okay. Um, so that was a DBQ prompt, 2016, I believe, okay? Um, these are two examples that the College Board said would work as the thesis point, okay? So look, the ideas about American independence changed greatly. There's that evaluate the extent, greatly, okay? From 1763 to 1783. In the beginning, colonists only wanted representation in a say legislation of new laws, but by 1783, Americans wanted true freedom from British rule, okay? It could be better, but guess what? It works. Another example, from 1763 to 1783, ideas of American independence greatly changed from the colonies uh, blindly accepting the tyranny of the British by religious rights of divine kings to believing in natural rights of individuals against um, the change in or British rule. So you see, they both gave me the extent greatly. That one word could be the difference with you getting the full thesis point or not. OK, 
Okay. And then they both talked about how there was a change. The first one's like, all they wanted at first was just representation. And then it goes to independence. And the second one's like, they were, you know, they were accepting of this tyranny and then it changed. Okay. So pre-context, okay. These are two examples for the same prompt that worked according to the college board. Okay. Um, so you see the changes, like that, that first sentence, I added that just to, you know, make that work. But then you can see someone talked about the navigation acts and then like solitary neglect. Okay. And then ends with the French Indian war. That's perfect. They gave me enough things where I know they aren't faking it. And they set the stage for what the prompt's about. Okay. The second one uh, talks about the French Indian war, which will increase the involvement um, and then you have like these British leaders. Do you see both of these? They're not long, but they provide just enough proper nouns to where I know they aren't faking it and everything is relevant. Okay. Now let me show you when you are writing your LEQ, what should your first paragraph look like? Okay. I took, okay. Look at this because I'm very like, this, this is really good, especially from grading. I can tell you this, this is, this is the best way for my perspective. Um, in this paragraph right here, I just took one example of pre-context you just saw, and I took one example of a thesis you just saw. Okay? Your first paragraph, do you see how pre-context is the very beginning? Okay? Now, do y'all see that awkward space? That space is deliberate. Okay? Because what follows that little space in that paragraph? your thesis. Okay. Just like how I told you um, for that Hamilton question on your quiz, if you list things, if, if you just like typed all this stuff, I might've missed it. You get what I'm saying? Having a little space right there in the same paragraph alerts me to be like, here is your thesis. And the thesis is the most important part of your um, LEQ because it's what your entire essay is about. Okay. So when you write, when you write your um, LEQ, your, you know, that first paragraph, not main body paragraph, but your first paragraph, your pre-context, and then you just little space thesis in your first paragraph. Give me a thumbs up if you got it. Okay. And just remember, of the six points the College Board requires from you on the LEQ, this right here, you've earned two. Okay. Like you've earned two out of one third of your points for the college board on AP exam day. That's it right there. Okay. Now for your topic sentences, I'm talking about um, your main body paragraphs. Okay. So this is not English where I, I don't want very, you know, vibrant words and long, whatever. I need, some of y'all skip, a lot of students skip a topic sentence, okay? A topic sentence should basically be what is like your bucket about, but in sentence form, okay? So I'm gonna go back to Clayton's example of environment with that comparison, okay? I would say something like, there are significant differences um, with the environment of the three colonial regions. Okay. Do you see in that sentence, what is that entire paragraph going to be about? Environment. Okay. And you see my thesis because you see the skill. And I'm saying there's significantly more differences when it comes to environment. Do you see how a lot of people just don't include that and they just go straight into, you know, the rocky soil, blah, blah, blah. No. Keep it simple because, and that's something like if you look, topic sentences, I want it simple, simple, simple. Whatever your entire paragraph's about, what's in, that's what that topic sentence is. And do you see it forces that thesis to be seen throughout the entire essay with having a topic sentence like that? Okay. So now let's talk about using evidence. Okay. So for each piece of content, okay, remember. Y'all uh, chat with me very quickly. To get the full evidence point, how many pieces of evidence must you provide? To get the, yes, 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 yes. 
three in the entire essay, okay? And I'll tell you this right now, once you have done three and you know they're solid, Forget about it. Keep doing the other things. Maybe go after the unicorn. If you have six pieces of evidence and they're awesome, yay, but guess what? You only needed three. Okay? If you aren't sure, maybe go for four in case you mess up with one. Okay? But if you have three soft pieces of evidence, that's all you need, and you've already maxed out. Okay? Um, so what you do, this is, and see, see at the bottom where it says, what does this sound like? Remember the SAQ? The little like idea mnemonic device, you identify the proper noun. So something like one example of a um, like an environmental uh, factor or something like that would be the soil in New England. Like that, I'm just identifying it. Okay. Now let me define it. Okay. Um, this soil was um, very rocky and not too fertile. You know, something like that, okay? And then you're explaining it. And remember, I think a lot of people, this is the harder sentence. I like using the word thus or furthermore or moreover, okay? And you would say this soil in contrast with the um, like Virginia soil um, played a big role in leading to da, 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 da. you get what I'm saying um, so again with each piece of evidence you need three sentences you introduce it you define it and then you explain how it supports your argument if you do that three times like for you know three evidence and you do that three times you now earn your final evidence point. Okay, so now <clears throat> let's talk about the format, what I, what I want to see, okay? Your first paragraph, the opening paragraph, we'll call, if you want to, we'll say the preamble, if you want to get all like colonial and stuff, um, it should be your pre-context and your space and then thesis. Okay, let's pretend that you're like, crap, I don't remember what happened before this prompt. Just skip the pre-context, especially if you're typing it, you can always add it later. Okay, just don't waste your time. If you don't know it, skip it. You can always come back to it. Okay, that's the beauty of it being up there first. Okay, then your main body paragraphs. You have that basic topic sentence. And then let's use the evidence. You introduce it. You define the evidence. And then you explain how it supports the thesis. And then I said repeat it if you need to, okay? And then a concluding sentence. All that means is you are almost restating. You're like 90% restating your topic sentence, okay? So concluding sentence makes you sound like a really good writer, but you don't have to think too much. Just like use a little synonym of like your topic sentence and you're good, okay? Okay, so what we're going to do is um, I think the best thing to do is let's practice this, okay? Um, and I think the best thing to do is you can do it with your group because I want some of y'all, like, if you work together, you might have better ideas, and some of y'all might not be used to writing like this, and some people might be, and so y'all can work together, okay? So what I want you to do, okay, is I want you to get out that LEQ order thing that I posted. It might be called like practice or something, but I want you to basically do that um, prompt. That's, and again, you've already done the pre-context to that prompt, so don't worry about pre-context, okay? But I want you to practice, um, like, I think by the end of class, what would make me really, really happy is if you spent... 10 minutes like doing the, the like the word bank and the organization okay and then I really want you to practice with using the evidence in one main body paragraph okay okay um Keisha for the LEQs in class you will not have options but I will tell you this right now if you are in class tomorrow it will be something from period three 
So that is chapters five, six, and seven. Okay. Um, so yeah, no um, options, but just note if you're in class tomorrow, five, six, or seven will be your chapter. Okay. Um, your, your, your thing. Okay. So again, so I want you to spend like no more than 10 minutes practicing like um, your rough, like, you know, doing this little thing right here. Okay. And then what I think super, super important is doing a one main body paragraph. And again, if you're working with people, just alternate one sentence one, and you know, people just write a sentence. Okay. And you, do that um but that one body paragraph is going to really help people um so again i'll show you that prompt just so you don't have to go back Okay, so I am sharing with you right now um, that, that prompt. Okay, so again, just organize it and give me one main body paragraph. Don't waste your time doing pre-context. You did that yesterday. Okay. did ask um you never know right now the college board is expecting a regular um administration like nothing changed but you never know um you can just do this on like a google doc and i'll, I'll create an assignment tommy um where you can post it okay i'll create an assignment where you'll post it um just like the question and post it but i mean technically um if you need to use your notebook, go for it, but you might run out of time. The, um, yes, you can do it with your group, Christine. The best practice, and again, it's a 10% grade this first time. The best practice is not to use your notebook, okay? Because you most likely not going to use your notebook um, in May, okay? Uh, but if you're just like, you know, whatever, then because there is a chance you use it in May, I will let you use your notebook. But you're going to run out of time if you just rely on that notebook. Okay, so try your best without it. It's a 10% grade.
thesis paragraph, if you want to include just like a few, 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 few examples, that is fine. Just do not define the example. So think of it as like you can name drop just a few things if you feel like it makes your thesis stronger, but no defining.
Okay, so um, I messed up. I, I really messed up. I forgot to check a box on the quiz to let you know whose quiz is what. So here's what I'm willing to do. Okay? If you want to take the exact same quiz right now, I will let you do it. And if you don't, I will. I have another version you can take tomorrow in class. Okay? So, yeah. When I mess up, at least, you know, I just want to assign it again. So, put your name in the chat right now if you want to take the quiz right now, the exact quiz you just took. That's what I, I figured y'all would want to take these back to group, okay? Um, Molly, there's a spot where I have to check to collect your email addresses, and I did not. So, like, I see the answers, but there's absolutely no way of me to see who wrote the answers. Okay. So here is what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a copy of this quiz right here. It's going to say copy of quiz for me, and it is for me, I promise. I, okay, I clicked to now eat it, whatever. Okay, and what I want you to do, just to make it easy, okay, I am posting this right now. Okay. You know what? Like I'm just I'm just gonna go guardian, y'all. You're not taking the quiz, right? Yeah. Okay. No, I'm going to do this just in case I can help. Mm -hmm.
Make sure you look at the little thing I said in chat about one of the questions. Okay, you probably need to start, you know, submitting. Make sure we're not cheating.
and Jack. Y'all go ahead and submit it. Thank you. All right. Uh, and All right, uh, let's see, Kendall will remove. And Crystal, and you're the only person here now, you just continue working, okay? I want to email your second block because I know they're in you know, a technology issue. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Hello. Um, I can't Crystalyn, um, can you uh, type who your second block teacher is? I'll email her crystal night.